so many people will say that the small caps are the true sign of the U.S. economy. We've talked about that as well. Is it is it just a market idea, or is it just a market um, that without the economy, or is it both? What are your thoughts on this massive divergence with RTI or RTY, I should say, uh, the Russell 2000 and the Nasdaq and S and P? Well, the the nature of a lot of those companies, something like 40% of them are negative cash flow businesses, puts them at the front end of that decay experience of elevated interest rates, right? Because those are businesses that, you know, at some point, you know, if you're perpetually loss making business at some point or another, you're going to run out of money and you're going to have to go to the financing markets, either the equity market to raise more equity or to the debt markets to borrow again. And so they are the en the entities, the businesses that are the most sensitive to the structural environment of higher interest rates. And so it's not that surprising like that you're not seeing much relief because for those companies, the reality is the level of rates is, um, you know, whether it's 425 or 475, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is that they're credit constrained. And I'd say those that 40% of companies that's in that index, they are unusual in the overall economy. And the reason why that is, is if you're a small business, like a true small business, I'm talking about like, you know, an accounting business, you know, you know, your neighborhood accounting business, those businesses aren't borrowing a ton. They, they run cash flow positive. Like you have to run cash flow positive. You don't have any access to credit. So if you're a small, small business, small entrepreneurial business, you're mostly insulated from interest rate rises. And obviously, if you're a big business, you know, you have access to the credit markets, you've termed out your debt, you often have a lot of cash, free cash flow, et cetera. And so what we're seeing in that index in particular is the sort of the belly of the market that's particularly sensitive to the continuation of elevated interest rates in the economy. And it's going to be tough for those businesses to, to succeed unless we get a meaningful easing of interest rates without a meaningful deterioration in economic conditions. And that's going to be tough. That's a tough place to be for a lot of those companies. And so... Ultimately, we go back to the Fed. If the Fed cuts once, twice, or three times, that actually will have some impact on what happens in those stocks, though, no? Yeah, I think so. The question is, for what reason? You know, if the Fed's creating easier monetary policy as a function of, let's say, inflation coming down, right, that's great for those companies because it doesn't mean that they're, they're not experiencing the growth risk. And they're getting the easing of financing conditions. The real problem for those companies is can they get the easing of financing conditions without getting a growth slowdown? And that's the real challenge. And I think we're, you know, I think the market is sort of staring at that and saying, oof, that is going to be a tough, that's going to be tough to get that combination of events that would be particularly, would make those assets, you know, those, those companies particularly Attractive. I think it's interesting, actually, I was, I was just looking at my day job is looking at how hedge funds are positioned. And I was just looking at how hedge funds today are actually at, have their lowest allocation, their most short position on a relative basis for small caps and mid caps than they've had in 25 years. And I think it reflects the challenge that those companies are, are facing. Some would say that's an opportunity, right? <laughs> because if, <laughs> you know, I always look at, you know, where not always, but if you're going to be in a true bull market and the economy is going to be, we go back to having this growth and these earnings, th that should help these smaller companies, you would think. Or are we just maybe in a scenario where just the big guys are going to do well in this market and it isn't an opportunity. Russell's continue going to continue to struggle because they just can't compete. We're in an environment where they don't play catch up, even in a good economy, just because really the world's changed. Yeah. And I, I think that's where the the sort of people talk about the K-shaped recovery. Well, when it comes to businesses, that K-shaped recovery is, you know, positive cash flowing businesses, whether they're big or small, do well in this sort of environment. And negative cash flow businesses do poorly or those with, that need a lot of fixed investment, right? Because they need a lot of incremental debt. And so that's kind of, that's the divergence. That's the K-shaped recovery. And so it's less about size, because as I said, like, actually, if you're a service, if you're a service company, if you're a small service company, actually things are pretty good for you, right? Services demand is quite strong. 
as long as you don't need any debt, right, you're in pretty good shape. And so that's really that that's the K is the financing need versus not financing need, much less like, you know, essentially the size cohort. It just happens to be that small companies are also big borrowers. 